Well, traders, it's another day in the office. Sean Kozak here checking in with Nurseries Trading Academy, and I want to thank you guys for joining me in the trade room this week. I had a blast. Uh, another profitable week. Uh, interesting enough, today was a losing day, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about cognitive correlation. Uh, for those of you that know the name NeuroStreet and the name Neuroscience and Street for Wall Street, and... Uh, the interesting thing here is that we spend a lot of time in the morning testing cognitive function. We, we have a cognitive training program that allows us to train our brains uh, to become stronger performance uh, thinkers. And uh, today I had the largest drop cognitively since December 18th. And uh, ironically, it was the first uh, day uh, of the week I actually took a losing trade. And so uh, it, we chalk that up as a coincidence. Uh, not really. Uh, we have a lot of science uh, testing going on where we're correlating brain function to correlated losses and wins. So we're going to be releasing that very soon, which is exciting. But uh, more importantly, I want to just talk a little bit about the trade room today. I took a nice, uh, I took a, a nice win on gold. I took a loss on the euro, and really, the loss on the euro is the best lesson of the week. Um, you know, for those of you that are watching some of the YouTube videos, um, you know, uh, the way you blow out an account is you hold on to large losses. And today, it's just about committing to the stop and moving on to the next trade. Um, you're going to take a loss. You're going to take a win. Most people. Uh, are taking consecutive losses rather than consecutive wins. So one of the things I want to do today is I want to show you a little bit about my winning percentage uh, over the past uh, month and then show you how that correlates to profitability and then being okay with taking a loss once in a while. So real quickly, traders, we use market profile, volume profile arbitrage. We transfer higher time frame to smaller time frame levels, and then we trade support and resistance. Yes, we do look at supply and demand. Yes, we do look at order flow. Yes, we do look at Fibonacci. But the main core is looking at the auction process and then using everything else for confluence. Now, we follow a top-down trading process. This never changes. Every morning in our trading room, if you're in on a guest pass or you want to come in and learn our strategy, we're very open with what we do. It's the tool sets that allow us to be able to make the decisions easier, but we'll still teach you how we trade with them without even having to invest in the capital on those software products until you're comfortable. So all you got to do is join us in a trade room on a guest pass, and we'll teach you how to trade our system. And then if you feel it's the right fit for you, you can join us, okay? So sign up for a guest pass, neurostreet.com. Very simple. You can uh, join us and uh, be a part of what we're doing on a daily basis. We do trade in the room. We do call out trades. We do look at little levels. We do identify things in advance so you can understand what we're doing. But I encourage you to join us on all social media, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. This is why you're probably watching this video as you're a subscriber to YouTube. If not, make sure you click below and subscribe. And more importantly, uh, get on board uh, with our content. We're putting out a lot of it, and we will continuously do so. So that being said, let's get into the charts. Before I do that, I want to talk about my brain. Okay, I want to talk about my brain today because for those of you that are aware, and for those that may not be aware, let's go into Neural Street's website for a second, and you'll go up here to the cognition page. This is really, really important for you guys to understand. This is a trader development. So if you've ever looked at trade psychology, if you've ever looked at you know managing fear and greed, this is exactly in the same environment, only the other side of it. So where tra you know trading psychology looks at uh, human emotion, fear and greed. This looks at brain function, cognitive decision making. Okay. So just a little bit of a disclaimer here. Uh, I, you know, I work out in the gym every day, and yesterday was a pretty heavy leg day. And what happened was, I'll just pull this back up. Uh, I knew this morning coming in the market that when I woke up, I felt really droggy. And it's not that I'm not intelligent or that, you know, I didn't have a good diet or I didn't train well. It's just that sometimes your brain uh, is cognitively not in tune. And so this morning, if you take a look, I had the biggest drop. That's the wrong one. Let's do this. And I had the biggest drop right there. Last time I had that drop was over here. Last time I had that drop was over here. And that being said, when we see that, I have a risk-off environment. So I'm thinking less size, go in with less, less aggression, trade a little bit more passively. So today, first trade out the gates, took a, a stop out on the euro, which is totally okay. Because take a look at this. There was multiple levels 
I took this trade right here. I took this trade right here. And I looked at the ATR, and it was about 36 ticks at the time. That's that's this little arrow you've seen right here. Now, there was another zone here. There was another zone there. There was another zone here. But that's the issue that traders face, is if you're going to be a reversal trader, and this is yesterday's high of day, when they break outside the range of the prior day's auction, the likelihood of these reversal trades becomes less stronger. They become harder to make money. So that being said, okay, that being said, what we do here is we teach traders not to try to be too aggressive. The only place, the best place to get into this trade would have been the normal place and then up here at the higher time frame level. Everything in here is extra risk. So when we see this, my, 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 uh, my plan was just to take the stop. Just take the stop. Because even here at that location, you know, even at that location, it's, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily, you don't want to turn small losses into large losses, okay? Now, let me take a look at the gold trade. Gold trade was a really nice short. Same strategy, same everything. It's just this market held its range. Came in. Let's go in here. Turn the markers on so you can see them. Perfect. So, took T1 and T2 on the next bar. Entry on the short level, T1, T2 came down. And what I did, okay, what I did today was I actually filmed this trade live going on in our our trading room. And I asked some of the other traders uh, what they felt about our trade room and, you know, why they enjoy it so much. And, uh, you know, the net result today was a loss for me. But it wasn't a loss for the week. It was just a loss for me this morning. Small loss, $500 loss. I've been averaging $1,000 a day over the past two weeks, and today was a losing day, and I was only 500 So to me, that's a, that's a good thing, and hopefully you guys can learn from that over time. The only way that's going to happen is if you come into our trading room. So why don't I transition to some live footage, and stay tuned for some interesting releases. We're going to be, we're going, to be going out and, and uh, talking about correlation with regards to cognitive risk reporting, and uh, I think you guys are going to be equally impressed on that. So traders, I'm going to transition to the live footage, and we'll see you next Tuesday morning in our trade room. So just to kind of touch base on the two trades, the stop out on the euro uh, was there to protect from large losses. And I think a couple of you guys already said that you took your exit on that, which is great because ultimately the first trade was here. And as it broke out on a huge range extension, we chose not to scale into these levels because we never knew where the market was going to go. And we don't want to take a small loss and turn it into a catastrophic loss. Okay. So owning the stops, trusting the strategy, moving on. Right away, we went into another position on the gold market. Okay. I'm holding for a larger target. I'm holding for a larger target at the value area low on this area. Okay, now, who's in this trade with me? Who's in this trade with me? Can you guys type a yes if you're in this trade with me on gold? If you're in this trade, you know, let's wait and see how they're going to they're gonna pull this up. Jonathan's in this trade. Anybody else in this? Robert's in this trade. You're out now, Vadim. So they came down. They came within one tick of the Valerie Low. They're trying to come in now. Let's see. They're on that support level. Do you see how they came in off that support? Okay, so good to see you here. Good to see you guys. You're out. Rob's out. So you're on that support level. You're taking your profits. That's 20 ticks. It's 200 bucks a contract. Okay. It's 200 bucks a contract. They've already cleared over the volume point of control. So what you could do is you could squeeze price right above the value area high, or sorry, you could squeeze price above that low volume pocket because if they roll it back over that high volume node, that's the place where it's probably going to get hung up. So I would rather squeeze my stop and let my targets run. And you can do that right now. I want to see strong deltas. Right here, 
equal buying met with equal selling. There's a battle going on here, and I, I'm trying to see if they're going to come down and test the value area low right there. Now, there's a big level of support right here that they're, they're, they're stuck on, and we're going to wait and see how that's happening here. We're going to wait and see. Okay. So, if I could ask you guys one question, okay, one question, what would you say is your favorite thing about our trading room? Honestly, like what what is it about our trading room that you guys love the most or that you guys appreciate the most? And this is for all the new traders in here, anybody else that's watching. Anybody have an opinion? It, it goes a long way to help a lot of new traders see the truth of what you get in here as an experienced trader. Um, so Vincenzo's, <clears throat> the clarity, rules and discipline. A lot of information, rules and discipline. You explain things very well. It's real. You follow rules, prescribed, hands-on experience, detailed explanations. <laughs> Perfect. You actually explain in depth, you take your time, and it's selective. So I have my target here, guys. I'm waiting to see. <clears throat> Losses and gains. That's important. That's important, isn't it? To be able to trade in here and see it. How many of you guys find that that's important for you guys? Order filled. Out. Target hit. Order canceled. Can you guys tell me how much money you made on that trade for those of you that took that short with me? Jonathan made 530. Larry made 300. Anybody else take that short? 10 ticks, Rob. Still in it, Casey. Casey's holding for a bigger target. Trailing. Fantastic. Still with a runner, Robert says. Fantastic. So you guys are still managing for bigger profits, larger. Take a look at the reaction in here. This is the value area low. I would expect to catch a serious bounce here. But if they flush it, could go back to this point of control. Okay. So a bunch of you guys took profits on that. In fact, a lot of you guys are probably making back some of the loss that we took on the euro, which is exactly why I held for a larger target there. I'm trying to make a little bit of that profit back. Okay. <clears throat> Let's watch this. So thanks for your feedback, traders. It goes a long way to help the new guys, especially anybody watching this on our social media channels and that. It's, uh, everybody started somewhere new, right? And uh, the big thing is that you guys are learning how to do it, and you're seeing it done in front of you in real time. 